Hi, hello everyone. My name is Vivek. I am a software developer. I make videos about containers, Kubernetes, Go as a programming language, distributed systems, and sometimes about software engineering in general. So if you have been liking the kinds of videos that I make, you should consider subscribing to the channel and you should follow me on Twitter as well. Uh, in this particular video, I am going to talk about how the processes that are running on two different network namespaces can talk to each other. Uh, this video is going to be the very first video of the series where I'm going to uh, explain Kubernetes networking end to end. So I have already made a video about how exactly uh, containers work and where I talked about what exactly are Linux namespaces and specifically uh, network namespace. So if you have not watched that video, I highly recommend you watching that video. But I would briefly go ahead and try to summarize uh, what exactly uh, that video that video explains. So basically when we are trying to run two containers or let's say when we are trying to run a container, we would want to make sure that the container is running on an isolated environment and is not ever able to uh, interfere with the things uh, that are running on the host machines or uh, let's say is not able to interfere uh, with the network related settings or configurations that are there on the host machine so let's say uh, this is uh, this is the host that we are talking about and if we want to run a container on this particular host uh, what we can do is again container is just uh, uh, let's say very very briefly very naively we can say that containers are just just processes and yeah you again if you want to understand about containers more I have I have a playlist where I explain everything about containers so what we usually do is we create a Linux uh, network namespace and then we try to create the process inside this network namespace and because I have created a new network namespace and then we are running a process inside that network namespace, this process will not be able to interfere with the network related configurations uh, that are present on the host machine. So this is what we have already talked about and again if you have some questions about this, if you do not understand this, I, I highly recommend you uh, checking the other videos out. Now in this particular video what we are going to talk about is let's say we have uh, we have two network namespaces uh, one network namespace is let's say a uh, server and we have a server running here and the other network namespace is called uh, let's say client and we are running a client program here now this is this is almost a real world scenario I would say let's say you want to run two containers on your host machine so let's say this is your uh, this is your host machine and in this particular host machine you want to run two containers one is server and another one is another one is client so as part of this video we are going to look into how this process that is running in the client network namespace can talk to the process that is running on server network namespace so i, I hope this makes sense now, before actually jumping into the implementation, before actually uh, implementing the things, uh, let's talk about some of the some of the terminologies uh, very briefly because they are very because they are very important uh, when it comes to to Linux networking. So, the very first thing that we are going to talk about is uh, network interfaces. So, uh, let's say you have you have a process. Uh, running on your host machine. So again, any any process. Let's say if you have nginx uh, web server that is running on your on your host machine on your node, and it wants to talk to the outside uh, system. This this outside system can be anything. So this connection this is made possible using network interfaces. So this connection. So for example, these software applications that are running on your host machine are able to talk to the, the let's say entities that are outside of your of your host or node uh, using using network interfaces now this network interface can be can be of it's mainly of two type so the first one is uh, the first one is actually 
uh, network interface, the hardware network interface that you can see sometimes on your machine as well. For example, uh, the port where you can plug in the Ethernet cable, uh, Ethernet cable, uh, etc. And the the other type is virtual network interface. And these virtual network network interfaces are uh, not basically mapped to the the hardware interface hardware network interfaces uh, they are let's say just logical entities uh, that are that are used for used to enable communication between the processes between the things that are available in the in the inner node itself so in this particular example if we want these two network namespaces to connect to each other we would use a virtual uh, network interface so yeah these are these are some of the some of the things that i just wanted to uh, uh, clarify so what are net network interfaces and then virtual uh, network interface and then actual let's say network interface now that we know about these things so once we create uh, these network interfaces uh, this virtual network interface or let's say network interface in general is something that gets assigned an IP address. So when you when you create an IP ad network interface or if you have a network interface, uh, you would you can assign an IP address to that network interface uh, so that uh, so that processes things uh, can communicate to that to other processes processes let's say via, via that net, network interface and we are going to look into uh, all these things in, in much more detail in just a bit so things would uh, make much much more sense so now uh, let's quickly go ahead and try to look into the application that i have and the, the problem that we are going to face if we try to run those applications in in different uh, network namespaces so i just have uh, if you see here uh, in this third terminal, if I run tree dot, so I just have two directories here, client and server, and these two directories have two applications, uh, client and server. If we go ahead and try to have a look into that, so this is a very simple Go server that is running on port 8080, and once once this particular URI is called on this particular port, it's going to just respond with hello world. This is a very simple web server. We are specifying that this server is going to run on port 8080, and it's going to have the IP of the of the of the system where it's going to run. So if it's going to run on this machine, we can access it via localhost. And 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 similarly, if it's running on let's say uh, another machine that has a publicly available IP address. Uh, we can we can use that IP address. So that is the reason I'm not specifying an, an IP address here. Similarly, if you look into this client application, uh, this client application, uh, if you see here, just tries to just tries to make an HTTP GET request to this particular endpoint that is HTTP colon double slash and then obviously IP address and port because our server is running on port 8080 and then the resource path serve. Now this this IP address uh, is something that can be passed to the client so just to make sure that when we run this client we can pass uh, any IP address that we want to. By default it's going to take localhost uh, but we can pass any IP address that we want to. Now uh, let's just go ahead and try to try to run these uh, two applications. So. I, I just changed the directory to server and here I'm going to change the uh, directory to client. And if I try to uh, run server and try to run client as well, if you can see here, it's it's clearly able to access the server that is running that is running on on this host machine on port 8080 and the resource path is served. Now, if we look into this particular diagram here, if you look into this particular diagram here, if you see to make sure that this process is running as a container, what what, what container container engines or container container engines do is they are going to run 
them to run this process in a, in a different network namespace. So let's go ahead and try to run this process in a, in a different network namespace. Now, uh, when we, again, I have talked about this in my, in my previous video, uh, to create a network namespace, what we can do is we can use IP and IP net NS command. So to list all the network namespaces, we can run IP net NS and LS. So uh, network namespaces and then list all the network namespaces. Uh, we are not going to talk about these already created network namespaces for now. I'm just going to create add a new network namespace. So IP net NS add, and I'm going to add one namespace called server NS. And once I have added this network namespace, if I try to list the network namespaces again, I can see the server namespace here. Now, let's just go ahead and try to create another another uh, network namespace for the client process. So IP net ns add and then client ns. So now if I run IP net ns ls, you can see that we have two network namespaces created, client NS and server NS. Again, if you do not understand what network namespaces are, I have, I have talked about it in, in, in very much more detail in one of the other videos that I would long link either in description or, or somewhere else. Now, now that we have uh, these two network namespaces, let's try to run server in server network namespace. So IP net NS exec, this command can be used to run a command inside the network namespace. So we are going to run something in server namespace and the process that we are going to run is dot slash server. And if I now, you can see it, it simply means that the server is running in the server NS network namespace. Now let's go ahead and try to access the same process from client network namespace uh, using client. So IP net NS exec and we want to exec into client network namespace and the process that we want to run is client. And as you can see here, now we are obviously not able to, we are not able to access the server that is running, that is run, running on the uh, server network namespace. Again, if you look into this particular diagram, now we are in the same situation. So we have client network namespace, we have server network namespace, and we are running server in server network namespace, client in, the, in its respective network namespace, and client is not able to talk to uh, server uh, network namespace. Now what we are going to do is, we are going to make sure we are going to do things uh, using which client would be able to talk to the server. So this is basically, uh, this is basically the fundamental, let's say, idea of how containers that are running on your host are able to basically talk to each other. So now, before actually moving to, to that, since we have talked about virtual network interfaces already, uh, to make sure that two network interfaces are able to talk to each other, what we can do is we can create a virtual Ethernet type of, of uh, virtual virtual network interface basically. So we are going to create a virtual network interface of type VETH that is that is uh, virtual Ethernet. And once we have created a VETH type of virtual network, virtual network interface, uh, what we are going to do is we are going to use that to connect these two network, network namespaces. So again, if I try to define what exactly uh, VETH type of network namespace, network interface is, so Network, network interfaces, uh, like I said, uh, virtual network interfaces in general are, are uh, let's say, network related uh, things that can be used uh, to, for example, if it's if it's not virtual, if it's just network network interface, it can be used to transfer the packets, let's say, outside of the system. But virtual network interfaces can be used to make network namespaces to each other. Uh, I, I hope uh, that makes sense. So now what we are going to do is uh, let me quickly check my uh, diagram as well. So what we are going to do now is if we have created, uh, we know that we have created these two uh, network namespaces. 
if we go ahead and try to let's first of all let's go ahead and try to look into uh, the the network namespaces ne sorry network interfaces that are present in this in my host machine so if you see here this is loopback uh, network interface uh, i think this is the actual uh, ethernet network interface uh, this is the wifi network interface uh and you can see the see the state of these interfaces etc so using ip link command we can list all the network interfaces that are available on the on the host machine so if we go ahead and try to do the same thing net ns exec and then if we run into server ns and then ip link we can see that we just have one one network interface and and this is expected basically because since we have created a new network namespace uh, server ns we don't have any network related uh, configuration or, or any network interfaces created already so uh, what we are going to what we are going to uh, and, and if we try to run this in client ns as well i'm pretty sure that we are going to see the same result we just have Uh, one network interface that is that is loopback network interface face i am pretty sure that you know about loopback it can be used uh, to connect to the processes that are running on the on the on the same uh, machine so now what we are going to do is we are going to create a virtual network interface of type vith and then we are going to use that virtual uh, network interface to connect those two network name namespaces uh, whenever we create uh, whenever we create a virtual vith type of network interface uh, let me quickly try to uh, draw again so so let's say i have so this is one network namespace and this is let's say another network namespace this is a server so whenever we create a a vith type of a virtual network interface it's created in pair basically so let's say i have created a vith and this is the network interface that i have created that has two pairs uh, this pair is called let's say a uh, pair client and then uh this pair is called let's say a uh, pair server so again virtual vith type of vith type of network interface uh vith type of network type of network interface is always created in pairs so pair let's say a and pair b in this particular case we are going to call it pair client and then pair server and once we have created this vith network interface we are going to move server pair of this network interface inside the server network namespace and we are going to move the client pair of the network interface to the client network namespace so once we have moved uh, these these ends of the vith to, to to the network network namespaces after that if we run ip link command again in this network namespace we would be able to see so right now we just we were just able to see uh, if you if you look, in, look into this output we were just able to see loop back but once we have moved these pairs into into uh, the network namespaces if i run ip link command again we would be able to see the 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 network interface that we have passed or that we have moved into into the server namespace and into the the client namespace so let's just go ahead and try to create these create these uh, network sorry create the create this uh, virtual interface now this is the uh, this is the uh, man base you can use uh, these commands to basically uh, to basically create create vith pair and you can also read about uh, what exact what exactly vith is and if you if you see here uh they can act as tunnel between network namespaces so it's it's basically clear, mentioned uh, in which particular situations we can we can use vith type of network interfaces so again vith is a type of network interface another type is bridges there are a lot of other types as well so i'm just going to copy uh, the command that i have noted down already uh, in my in my notes so 
this is the same command basically that we that we see here all right so it, it just says rp link cathy rp link is basically used to interact with network namespaces it is saying add a network interface ip link is used to interact with network interfaces it is saying create or add a network uh, interface of type with one pair is going to be called pair c and one pair uh, another pair is going to be called pair s so pair client and pair server now in case of uh, in case of with what happens is uh, whenever a packet is dropped at the one end of the of the one pair one end of the v is network interface it is almost immediately available uh, at the at the other end and this is how the communication happen and uh, once uh, if both the if both the pairs are up uh, overall uh, network interface status is up if either of the pairs are down overall with network interface status is down so yeah if you want to send something uh, to server ns from client ns you just have to drop something at this particular end that we have moved in the in the client ns or that we are going to move in just a second so this command is basically going to create the the veth type of network interface and it has been created on the on the host machine so if you see here now uh, this has not been uh, moved yet so uh, this is obviously your uh, this is my uh, Linux host basically and this network network interface has been created on this Linux host So if I run IP link on my on my Linux host, host I should be able to see uh, this network interface So let's go ahead and try to run IP link and now if you see here we can see two pairs So this is one pair pair s at pair c and this is the this is the another pair That is the reason we are seeing uh, these two uh, these two extra entries as the output of IP link so now we have we have a VE network interface created on host machine uh, the next task is to move one pair uh, again if you look into this diagram move one pair into client namespace and move another pair into into server namespace so again I am going to uh, copy this uh, command that I have that I have already written here and this is a very very simple command so again ip link is used to interact with network interfaces and we are saying set pair, pair c of v to network namespace client ns so let's just go ahead and try to hit enter so now what just happened is uh, one pair this particular pair has been moved into the network into the client ns now what we are going to do is we are going to do the same for pair s so pair server and move that to the server ns so now again now what happened is now this particular pair has been moved inside the server network namespace so now we have veth one pair in client namespace another pair in network namespace now if i run ip link again if you see here we don't we do not, we do not see those pairs anymore why because they have been moved into different network namespaces if you if you look into the previous run of that command we were able to see those those pairs but we don't see but we don't see them anymore because they have been moved into uh, their respective network namespaces now if you again remember what we talked about once we have moved them to to their respective their respective network namespaces what we are going to do is we are going to assign them some ip address because yeah when we talked about virtual network interfaces we 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 discussed that they can have uh, an ip address they can have more than one ip address i think uh, but yeah for now uh, we are just going to specify uh, them them assign them IP address so again I'm going to uh, I'm going to assign uh, yeah the, the other very important thing that I forgot forgot to show you is uh, we see that we don't we see that we don't have any pair C or pair S network interfaces on host machine because they have been moved to the client name client network namespace and server network namespace so let's run the command into those network namespaces and see if 
they actually have the new 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 network interface so i'll be net ns and then exec and then we are going to exec into server ns and run ip link and if you see here we can clearly see server pair s has been moved into the server ns and that is the reason we are able to see uh, we are able to see that network interface as the output of ip link command again uh, this syntax is used to run a command into a network namespace so this is this specifies run a command into server ns and this is the command that is being that is being executed uh, if you want to look into the ip addresses as well uh, you can you can clearly you can obviously use ip address show or one, and once you are an ip address show you would be able to see ip addresses as well right now they don't have any ip addresses and their state is down uh, that is the reason we see see all these things so now what we are going to do is we are going to and if we try to do the same on on client ns so we should be we should be able to see uh, two network interfaces basically we already had loopback and client pair c was was just moved by us now what we are going to do is uh, let's run uh, sudo ip net ns exit client ns and in this client ns uh, we are going to run ip address show and let's run a watch on this so right now the state is down and this doesn't have this is not assigned an ip address and we are going to uh, do the same thing for server ns as well so server ns and if you see here we have pair s we have pair c and these network interfaces don't actually have an ip address and their state is down now let's go ahead and try to assign them uh, an ip address so this is the command that can be used to assign an ip address to to a particular network interface so again this this should be very clear we are we want to assign an ip address to this network interface uh, that is pair c now because this network interface is in client network namespace uh, we cannot just run the ip address assign command in the host machine we will have to run ip address command in the network namespace where this network interface is present in so because this network interface is present in client ns we are trying to run the command in client ns so ip net ns exit client ns and then we are the, the command that we want to execute is ip address add as, as i think it's pretty self explanatory we are trying to add the ip address to the to this to the network interface called pair c and the range that we want to assign to this network network interface is 10.0.0.1/24 again this is a way of uh, this is a way of of specifying a range of ip addresses so if it was just one ip address we could have we could have written 10.0.0.1 let's say but if we have to specify a range of ip addresses uh, this is a way called classless interdomain routing i think cidr that can be used to specify a range of ip addresses so in this particular way in this particular in this particular syntax we are saying uh, these three these three opt-ins can be uh, these three octants cannot be used basically for the IP address, and this particular octant, that is last octant, can be used uh, can be used for various IP addresses. So yeah, I mean, I'm not going to talk about this in much more detail. So in very brief, uh, we are going to have two raised to eight IP addresses if we if we if we specify the range like this because. 8 threes are 24 so these three octants are not, not going to be used so we just have one octant to play with let's say so yeah 2 raised to 2 raised to 8 uh, is the number of, of ip addresses that we have in this particular range and we are we are going to assign this to to the pair c now as soon as i hit enter here try to notice uh, try to notice the this output of pair c and If you if you see here now we can see that this is the IP address that has been IP 
the address range let's say that has been assigned to that, that has been assigned to this particular network interface in client ns and the status is still down so we are also going to we are also going to change that and we are going to uh, make sure that it is up so we are going to run this in client ns ip link set uh, device pair client to up again this is pretty self explanatory this particular part of the command is used or i specify that execute command in network namespace and this is the command that is going to get executed so we are just setting the uh, network interface status to up and now if you see this has been changed uh, to up now we are going to do the exact same thing for the for the server for the server server network interface as well so uh, net ns exec and then we are going to execute into server ns ip address add and let's let's assign let's assign the values from let's assign this particular range 10.0.0.2 uh, 24 uh, 2 pair server and if i hit enter we should be able to see uh, the IP address uh, specified here. Now, once we have IP address specified or assigned to that network names network interface, uh, let's go ahead and try to change that to change the status to up. And here we go. So we can see that now the set, now the status is uh, up here. So what, what has happened is if I go ahead and try to explain explain this diagram once again, we have basically done what we talked about. So we created a VH type of network interface. We moved one end to the client namespace, another end to the server namespace. We assigned IP addresses to those, uh, those ends of the network interface and we changed their status to status to up. And now what we are going to do is now we are going to check the connectivity. So let's run again. Let's run the server in the server network namespace. namespace. So uh, sudo ip net ns exec and in server ns we want to run server and we want to run client in client namespace. So sudo ip net ns client ns and dot slash client IP net ns exec and then dot slash client uh, okay so exec and then network namespace name so client ns and then the, the the command that we want to execute and this is not going to run we have we have already seen this so what we are going to do now is we are going to specify the server and we know the IP address of the server now because we have assigned this IP address. So let's go ahead and try to pass the IP address to be and here we go. Now you can see that it's it's basically trying to uh, talk to the process that is running at this particular IP port 8080 and the resource path resource path is is served so and it's basically successfully able to communicate with the with the other process uh, that is that is running on the other network namespace so again let's go ahead and i will try to uh, summarize this for you and then we are going to uh, basically wrap this up so uh, we know that uh, when we say we are running containers uh, or, or how it's actually containers work they use this concept called linux namespaces and linux namespaces can basically be used to to isolate things to run a process that is isolated from the host machine and network namespace is one example to isolate the network related configuration so uh, that is how containers basically do it so what we what we did is we uh, created a network namespace so this is network sorry about my handwriting so network namespace and we ran a process uh, called server in the in the in the server network namespace and there is this another uh, another 
network namespace again uh, this is called client ns and this was called server ns and we are running client here now we know that uh, and these things are obviously running on a on a host machine now we know that since these client and server applications or processes are running in their own network namespaces they don't have access to the network related configuration on the host machine and that is the reason if i try to try to talk to the server we will not be able to and this is the reason basically this is the this is what we expect basically because we are running on running them on different network namespaces now to make them talk to each other because yeah i mean if you are running on running processes on uh, two different network namespaces two different containers there will be use cases uh, for them to talk to each other so what we did is we created a virtual ethernet device or let's say a network interface uh, ni so we eth network interface and this is basically used again i can link this document to you you can look into this uh, this is you this is used to basically make sure that two network namespaces are able to talk to each other and this is created in pairs we moved one pair into into server network namespace another pair into client network namespace then we assigned ip addresses to these uh, to these pairs and we change their status to up and once we did that we are successfully able to talk to the servers the server process from client and and this is how this is how things done basically even even in uh, let's say real uh, real container orchestration now this is i mean things are not not that easy i would say uh, if we have Uh, we, we have just looked into we have just looked into the VEth type of network interface, but there is another type of network interface uh, called Briz, and Briz is basically used uh, as as a switch between network interfaces. So I have created, if you see here, I have created a VEth type of network interface, and if there are a lot of other containers, so we have this container C1. Uh, Let's say network, even network namespace. So this is another network namespace. This is another network namespace. If we have all these network namespaces, uh, these can actually talk to each other. If we just connect to them to this uh, bridge type of uh, virtual uh, network interface as well. Uh, maybe we would look look into how how bridge uh, network interface. actually works in in other video but for for now we just can understand that uh yeah for now let's focus this video in in uh to to be it just to just to uh the we eat virtual interface uh yeah i think this is uh, pretty much it that i wanted to talk about in this particular video if you have some questions about it feel free to ask them in the comments section and yeah if you think this is going to be helpful to your colleagues classmates uh, share it with them i will see you in the next one thanks so much